Once a birthright for the middle class, the 40-hour-a-week job with medical benefits and a pension is fading. Disposable workers, those easily fired without a social safety net, are becoming the norm. My project is to put a human face on these modern-day disposable workers and explore what it means to be part of a disposable labor force in world's third largest economy as it struggles to remain globally competitive. Much of the world used to look at Japan's economy with admiration and jealousy. Now they wonder what went wrong. The story of modern disposable workers provides a compelling portrait of middle class crisis and global unemployment, especially among the young. I initially started this project by working with aging day laborers who found themselves homeless. These workers supported nearly two decades of economic growth. They built highways, bridges, ports, schools, and high rises. Now they sleep under the bridges they built and rely on the occasional government sponsored job, mopping the floor of the labor center where they once came to find high paying jobs. I visited the town called Kamagasaki in Osaka which is located in the western part of Japan. It used to be a thriving day laborer's town. Today, it is home to about 25,000 mostly elderly former workers, about 1,300 of whom are homeless. Alcoholism, street deaths, suicide, tuberculosis, and most of all, loneliness prevail. Without family ties, they live and die alone as social outcasts from the mainstream salaryman culture. Once thriving labor towns like Kamagasaki are on the verge of extinction in Japan. With unemployment rate at the record high of 5.7% even among the young and educated, it is hopeless for the green men who used to work in the construction industry. I then followed up with the psychological impact of disposable work on people. I focused on new faces, karoshi, workers who overwork to suicide. Despite recent awareness of the dangers of overwork, Japanese white-collar workers, also known as salarymen, increasingly work long hours because of the fear of losing jobs and the shortage of manpower. Excessive overwork causes mental health illness, such as depression, and in some cases lead to suicides. Workers I met in Kamagasaki often said, this is what happens if you fall through the crack of mainstream. But even if you stay in mainstream salaryman culture, I found out a worker is nothing but another disposable body to a big company. With this grant, I plan to work on the third and fourth parts of this series. I will look at young part-time workers. An income gap between lifetime workers and their polar temp colleagues has widened significantly as they earn about 40% less than those on full-time contracts. Their numbers have steadily climbed from 16% in 1985 to 34% in 2007. This has swollen the ranks of an insecure economic underclass, reducing part-time workers to second-class citizens. Called internet cafe refugees by the Japanese media, they hop from one job to another, sleep at 24-hour computer cafes because they have no money to pay rent between jobs. I will document lives and struggles of those temporary workers. Lastly, I will report on women with dead-end jobs. Employment opportunities for young women are often limited to low-paying dead-end jobs or temp positions. Critics see women as the embodiment of Japan's productivity problem. One of the world's best educated labor forces stuck in banal jobs that do little to grow the economy. Women see no opportunities to maximize their potential. I would like to report on the frustrations and aspirations of women in female-specific jobs, especially hostess jobs, which is bad girls, which is increasingly popular profession among college graduates who can't find jobs. It is increasingly challenging to create and maintain employment. In a time of accelerating disposable work, I believe these workers' stories will show us the importance of protecting our right to work 
and society's responsibility to maintain employment in the competitive global economy.